Good morning, happy Monday. Um, I wanted to show you, I'm here bright and early on Monday morning. It is cloudy and rainy and not a beautiful day, but I wanted to show you what I plan on doing over at the back bulletin board um, to kind of make like a sound wall. So let me show you. Okay, so one of my teammates, I love the way she has it set up. Um, so we're going to do short vowels, long vowels, um, all the different things we're going to learn besides our consonants, our regular sounds. We have the foundations um, letter chart, alphabet chart up there. So I will send students that way if they're looking for consonant sounds because we're in first grade. But back here, I really want to focus on some of the vowel sounds and other tricky patterns we'll be learning like digraphs and things like that. So she was able to do it. She had an extra set of the foundations cards because I do want to keep um, like the symbols and everything the same. And I don't have an extra set of them to hang up here, but I had these little tiny baby ones. Um, they're not super tiny, but I thought they were too small. Uh, like they'll be fine, but we're gonna use both of these bulletin boards to do this. So I want them to be a little bigger. So what I did over the weekend, just quickly in Canva, I went ahead and made uh, like my own cards. They're, but they're the same symbols as foundation. So they use all the same symbols that way we are all on the same page. I really would like to try that trick where you spray them with like matte clear paint or something and that way they're not as shiny. But here we are, so you can see the size difference. I wanted them to be quite a bit bigger to really be able to take up space. That way when students are looking from their seats, if they need help with the sound, they can look up here. recognize that I printed out two O's instead of an E. We haven't learned short E yet, so I'm going to actually print and eliminate that one right now. Um, and then I do plan to, as we kind of go into each new category, I will add the header and then I will keep the sounds that we haven't learned flipped over like that, which I've seen many people do. That way we kind of like reveal them as we learn them. <laughs> left you yesterday. Um, I think I was talking about the sound wall. I think that's all I talked about yesterday. And then um, we had testing all day. So we did our, we're doing M class for literacy and then we're doing Ames Web for math. So we just banged it out in one day. Um, I had a few kids absent, so I need to do their makeups, but we did testing all day. So nothing was like regularly scheduled programming in here. Um, instead, students kind of went back and forth because I was also assessing. So they went back and forth between like a paper pencil activity and then an iPad activity, then a paper and pencil and so on. So today we are getting back to regular business. So I wanted to show you, I did get the E and kind of explain how I'm going to do the sound wall a little bit. And then I know I wanted to talk about morning meeting. So let's do that. Okay, I showed you this yesterday. I think yesterday I told you I accidentally printed out two O's. So I did get our E for for Ed, but um, the way I plan on using this is, like I said, it's a sound wall. So I knew I wanted a sound wall, but I didn't think I wanted to do the whole vowel valley and have, you know, all the mouths on here. It seems a little distracting. So instead, the only way a sound wall works for me is if, you know, we're gonna really use it as a tool. So the vowels, obviously my first graders have trouble when they are spelling. I said this yesterday, but for the consonants, I'm going to point them up there for the uh, to the alphabet chart with foundations. But then as we learn our trickier sounds like digraphs, vowel teams, diphthongs, all that stuff, we're going to put up here. Um, and again, I'm going to try to teach my students to look up here and use it as they are spelling. Today in foundations, we are reviewing E uh, and R. So when we do that today at like 9.30, no, nine o'clock is foundation. So at nine o'clock, I will show students how we have this new tool on the back. I will, you know, reveal the E and then we will go over those two sounds. Now for phonics, we are using foundations, but I wanna show you what I've been doing. 
I had made these over the summer. They're basically like Orton Gillingham aligned lessons um, for the letters. So here are the slides that we kind of walk through. Let me press slideshow. So when I'm introducing E later, this is how we'll do it. It says, what sounds do you hear in the sentence? So first, just phonemic awareness practice. I will read the sentence aloud twice, and then I will also point to each of the um, pictures and show what they are. Egg, 11, elf, elbow. So we can hear that eh sound. Next, we have um, E, elephant, eh. Um, now, I also know we use ed, so I will actually be showing them the ed foundations card. Um, which I need to grab, but I will show them Ed, but I don't mind showing them, you know, another picture. We're going to go over a lot of pictures that have the eh sound, and then we do the mouth. So then I have every student show me how to make that sound. I check every single one. Next, we go over some words that have the eh sound. I have them write it down. I always, at this point, I will write them down here, and then I have students also check their name tags and see if anybody has the E that has the eh sound. So we do that. Then we do our practice. We put our hands in the air. We practice making it. This is when I have them take out their whiteboards and markers and they have to make an E three times and circle the best one. Uh, and again, we use foundation. So we use the plain line, the grass line, all that fun stuff. And then last but not least, I have students come up and they have to circle or highlight the E's that they see in this grid. So we will do that with E and R today. And then tomorrow students will also get the E and R magnets to their foundation's magnet boards. Now, obviously I already have those. I made them over the summer, so I'm going to use them. Um, you don't need to buy the slides in order to do this process, but basically foundations is already going to be, it's going to walk you through a lot of that, but I really like to start with the sound, uh, and then we go to the explicit teaching, showing how to make the sound, letter formation, uh, coming up with words, and then kind of visual discrimination, making sure we also can see and identify that letter that makes that sound. And then we will add it to our sound wall. I'll go ahead and reveal it, flip it over, and teach students how to use that tool. Now, a few people had asked last time how we do our morning meeting. First, I just wanna show you when they come in, you already know we do our morning work that's on the table, and then they always have options that they can do. So today it's Legos and Brain Flakes. I will keep that same option um, all week long. And then I just go ahead and I put them, you know, on the carpet and then we will clean it up. Students that don't finish their morning work, it just goes in their catch-up folder to complete later throughout the day. And then everybody comes over after we clean up, everybody comes over and they sit in a circle here on the carpet. So they need to go towards the edges. They look up and decide what they want for their lunch. They have two options, French toast or ham and cheese sandwich, or they brought lunch from home. So I take attendance and do that. And then our morning meeting always has four, the same four parts. First, we always start with breathing. So I have this ball over here. Let me grab it. This is our breathing ball. And then one of our classroom jobs is our peer role model. That's my favorite job. It's always the person who is like, for the week, they are the all-star. They get to be my helper. They get to, you know, show everybody else what to do. Um, so the peer role model picks a number between five and ten. And when we do that, we'll go ahead and sit in the carpet and I will go ahead and lead this. In a couple weeks, I'm going to pass this off to the peer role model to lead. And essentially, we just take that many deep breaths. And as we expand the ball, our lungs expand, breathe in and out and it goes down. And we do that however many times the peer role model said. So that's how we start it every single day to kind of get our day off to a good start. Step two is always our greeting. I make sure our students say good morning to one another every single day. Um, they need to use their name. And then we can either do, you know, handshake, silent wave, pound it. Uh, we can do a global greeting. You know, we change that up every single day. Third step is always the morning message, which I will show you in a minute. And then fourth step is always our activity. So here's just an example. Good morning, class. Today's Tuesday, September 19th, 2023. And I read this for them. Uh, we have library today and we will be getting to take our first we'll be getting to take home our first books. Yesterday we had a ziggle zaggle day and didn't do what we normally do. Today we will get back to our regular schedule. Let's have a great day. So always just a little message. Yeah, uh, sometimes there's an activity thrown in there or something for them to talk about. Today we're just gonna talk about how we're getting back to a regularly programmed schedule. And then each day for activity, we have something different. Yesterday on Monday, it is always going to be a tell me what you did this weekend, especially when students are home, you know, they have something they probably want to share from the weekend. So they turn to a partner or they can share it in front of the class. It's up to them and kind of the day and what we, how much time we have for that time. So always on Monday, it's going to be tell me what you did over the weekend. Tuesday, I've been doing tell me Tuesday. 
And this is a quick one for them to talk to one another. And there'll be just a few different slides to say, tell me three things that start with B. And they go ahead and put it in their head. And then they share three of those things with a partner. Then we pause. Tell me three things that rhyme with ball. Same thing. And tell me two friends' names in this class. So just a couple different things there. Sometimes it'll be math related. Sometimes it will be uh, like last week we did one. Tell me two things you can do if you feel like you want to share something in class. And we talked about you can raise your hand. And we also said, um, you know, you can take a deep breath because we read my mouth is a volcano. So Tuesday is tell me Tuesday. Monday is always tell me about your weekend. Tuesday, I've been doing Tell Me Tuesday because it's just a quick little review one. Wednesdays, I shared in last week's video that I do Would You Rather Wednesday, um, and I used my Would You Rather slides that I already have, but you could just easily type up three Would You Rather questions, um, and get. And I like to have that one be like a stand-up, hand-up pair-up so they're moving around the classroom. Thursdays is kind of I fill in whatever. Sometimes we might do an active one where we get up and just get moving for a little bit. Um, and then Fridays is always a game. So we played Zoom, which I shared in this video. My kids love Zoom. Um, that is such a fun one. We also played Gotcha, which will, or Katya, which we'll probably play again. Um, I share about that in this video right here. Uh, but again, Friday is always kind of like a fun activity. Actually, last Thursday, I'm just remembering we played Buzz because we've really been getting into counting. So I introduced them how to play Buzz, which was a fun one. So yeah, that's how we do our morning meeting every single day. It's one of my favorite ways to start the day. Um, and I really like to make sure we start our day strong, start our day getting to talk to one another, feeling respected, welcomed, all that jazz. So I'm gonna go make a few copies and get ready for the day and I will check in later. Oh, I just wanted to, I just sat down on my computer, but I remembered something I wanted to share with you. Last week I shared how I was making um, foundations aligned three part drill slides. I have a bunch of like blending slides and all that, but I didn't have any that were aligned to foundations, which is what we're using. Um, and there's no point in, you know, drilling sounds we haven't taught yet. So I was making them, but somebody reached out to me on Instagram and let me know that they have free ones, the Rooney slides. Um, it was like M-A Rooney. Um, and they have tons of great already made slides. And it was such a great resource that I wanted to share with you. So thank you, Caitlin, for reaching out. And I'm going to link that link down below if you are interested in taking a look at some already done for you um, slides for the three-part drill. I'll link it down below. little math toolkits here for everybody. I had all these little bags and we really have been needing cubes and dice a lot lately in math, which is good. Um, but organization wise, I wanted to make it faster and easier for them to take out their manipulatives and what they need. So in each one right now, I'm putting a one die and then two stacks of cubes in different colors. So this way too, when they play games, they can each just grab their bag um, and go play instead of always needing to like go to the big bucket or something. So these were already in the classroom. Um, anything I'm sure would be fine. In fact, I have mostly this size. I have like 10 or 11 of these, but then I also have a bigger one and this one right here. So right now these are our little math toolkits. egg delivery to to drop off before school starts let's see how cute these are mm, I love them hello hello it is Tuesday I'm already in my pajamas it's 4 23 and I already have my dinner um it is a practice night so that means I'm sitting by my computer and eating by myself which is a bummer but that's the way it goes during the fall season uh only for two nights the rest of the nights we will sit at the table and eat together, which is much nicer. Um, today went great. I'm trying to think. I think the last things I showed you, I talked about morning meeting. I made our math kits. Um, in math, we're still talking about comparing numbers in tomorrow where we'll talk about uh, number patterns. So, and then at the end of the week, we're going to assess on numbers one through 10. Uh, so we can kind of move on from that. And then I told you yesterday was our testing day. So it's still the beginning of the year. We are still, you know, reviewing old concepts, getting everything done. We did in reading today. I don't think I've talked about what we're doing during the reading block. 
We are doing a genre study and we're focusing on realistic fiction right now. So we had read five books, kind of like an immersion into realistic fiction. And then today we talked about what they had in common and we did like an always often chart, what realistic fiction always has, what it often has. And then I gave students a pile of books to explore. Um, and then with a partner, they had to determine by looking at the illustrations, they weren't expected to read it right now, if they thought the book was realistic fiction or not and why. So to do that, they mostly look at the pictures and ask themselves, are the characters real? You know, are there animals talking? Is the background, is the setting realistic? This curriculum was created by people who worked in the district and it was created originally as a entire reading workshop uh, curriculum, but we've cut out most of it. And now it's like just the 20 minutes that we use for genre study. Um, because a lot of the read aloud lessons are really great. They're interactive read aloud lessons where we focus on vocabulary and all that. And then again, we can discuss different genres. Uh, and then that whole independent reading that, you know, reading workshop used to have. We don't do that anymore, of course. Instead, we do much more structured literacy lessons. And that's when we go ahead and do our small group reading where we focus on decodables, all that stuff. If you want to know more about the reading block, I can kind of walk you through what that looks like. Um, but yeah, overall, it was a great day. So I'm going to sit down. I'm going to look over tomorrow's plans, eat this dinner, and I'll see you in the morning. Wednesday. Um, I just wanted to pop in a little bit this morning. Today is actually Parker and I's 10 year anniversary, our official anniversary. So he's going to meet me here for lunch. Um, I have like a 40 minute lunch break. So I'm going to go. There's a restaurant right next to us. So he's going to pick it up. We're going to eat it there for lunch. So that will be fun. But I wanted to quickly show you what our genre study is looking like. I think I talked about it yesterday after school. So these are the books that we read for the immersion. Um, I had a lot of internal struggle reading The Snowy Day in September but we will read that again in the winter. So we read Amazing Grace, Ruby the Copycat, Snowy Day, How to Heal a Broken Wing, and The Leaving Morning. And then yesterday we talked a little bit about what realistic fiction is. I underlined the word real. And then we did an always often chart. Now we're going to fill in this a little bit more today, but we said it's always an imagined story that takes place in the real world, has a beginning, middle, and end, and the characters have problems that we might have. Um, again, it has to be real. And then often it has a theme or a lesson. And then also often it focuses on relationships between characters. So as we wrote these down on sticky notes, I kind of had, I had these books over here with me and I talked about each one and I we kind of looked through the illustrations and said, does this happen in a real place? Yes. What's the problem in the story? Could this problem happen to us? Yes. Uh, and so on. And then I had my students get in groups and I just pulled out, I think it was this bin right here. This bin is filled with just a bunch of like small little books and students got a pile of like five or six books and they just had to flip through. I told them it was okay if they couldn't read it yet. They were basically just going to see by flipping through the illustrations if they could determine if it was a realistic fiction book or not. And most of my groups did a really great job with that. Um, in fact, I pointed out, I like highlighted some great points where I heard students flipping to a page and they would ask their partner, do you think this could really happen? Um, some of them were confusing because some had animals, um, but were the animals the main characters? Were the animals talking? Uh, they were asking themselves some good questions. So we had some really good discussion around that. And today we're going to talk more about what realistic fiction is and look at a few more examples. In fact, this is what I was just looking at. I was seeing what other things I'm going to add to the always often chart. So we will review that and then uh, we'll come up with a definition, like a working definition with the class of what we think realistic fiction is based on what we know. And then I'm going to, if I have time, I think I'm going to read them uh, this other book and talk about activating our schema and making predictions uh, before we go ahead and dive into a story, which today's story is Amelia's Road. So we'll be able to do a quick little quick little picture walk and see if this is 
if it looks like realistic fiction, and then we can go ahead and confirm or disconfirm after we read, which, spoiler alert, it is realistic fiction. So yeah, remember those are like truncated lessons. They're shortened down to about 20 minutes for our read aloud portion um, to really focus on language comprehension, vocabulary, all that. All those wow words that I told you about um, from Ruby the Copycat and the Bad Seed, they all come from this time of our day. So we're kind of taking the lessons that once were for Reader's Workshop and really pulling out the important parts for the read aloud. All right, I'm going to quickly add a few slides to the um, three-part drill that we've been doing. I showed you that last week. So I want to make sure I do a little review today before we dive into our new letters, P and J. So that's what I'm gonna do now and I will check in with you after school. Hello, hello, I just got changed. I am home from school obviously and I am heading out to go play pickleball. I think I said that earlier, I don't remember. But since it's our anniversary, we are going to play pickleball for a little bit and then go out to dinner. So I'm going to go ahead and end the vlog here. As always, any questions, drop them down below. I do know last week, a lot of people were asking about small groups and when uh, and kind of how I rotate that and how I run that. I want to give it another few weeks first. Right now I'm very much enjoying the way it's going, but I want to give it another few weeks to make sure I get all the kinks out, make sure I like the way it's going. And then I will share exactly kind of how that is working. So I will have that video in a couple weeks. Anything else? drop your questions down below. Um, and as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.